residents and, and on Friday, June 2nd, Councilmember Costa Costadinidi, State Senator Michael Gennaris, and Assemblymember Aravela Simodas held a street conference in Astoria, Queens, calling for traffic mitigation measures on the Grand Central Parkway in an effort to improve uh, traffic safety, bring environmental benefits, reduce the ongoing loud noise caused by trucks traveling on the neighborhood roads, and make travel faster and easier for cars. The three officials were joined by Congressman Joe Crowley, community leaders, residents and others. For decades now, large uh, trucks are not permitted to use the Grand Central Parkway when traveling towards the RFK Bridge and the BQE and vice versa. Instead, they are mandated to exit on the Astoria Boulevard service road and travel through residential neighborhoods, causing heavy traffic safety hazards for pedestrians and other traffic, including much pollution and horrendous noise. Currently, the Grand Central Parkway overpass below is not high enough to accommodate large trucks to go through. However, as officials stressed, this is a simple and not very costly fix that only requires for that section of the parkway to be dug and repaved. Officials also noted that the wheels are already in motion to achieve the requested traffic mitigation measures on the Grand Central Parkway. However, it will take about a year for the entire process, including uh, securing the necessary funds. All Astorians deserve access to streets without unbearable traffic, loud noises, and heavy fumes. Councilmember Costantinidis noted further adding that taking this move would be, quote, a solid step towards Astoria Boulevard feeling less like a highway for big trucks and more like the street that seniors, families, and residents need it to be every day. Councilmember Member Costantinidis, you're up uh, on a new task. Yes, uh, you know, we're here today uh, with Senator Gennaris, Simone Simotas, Congressman Crowley, uh, residents of our neighborhood to ask the state and city DOT to allow large trucks to stay on the Grand Central Parkway between the bridge and the BQE, the Brooklyn Cleese Expressway. Uh, through a weird quirk in the law and in the height of the bridges, uh, they are forced to get off into our community. Uh, they're just passing through. Yes. And yet their impacts on us are not just passing through. They are significant impacts when you talk about traffic adding uh, so many eight hundreds of 18-wheelers every day onto our Astoria streets. Uh, the, the impact that it has on our roadway, the impact that it has on our traffic safety, the impact that it has in our environment when they belch out that, that, that black smoke. Uh, it is a huge impact for our community in front of a park and, you know, and, and, and the roadway where our seniors are getting to the Doris Tower Senior Center. And, and it's also uh, uh, a matter of uh, safety. Without a doubt, I mean, you can't cross the street. No. You, you know, when they get caught in the crosswalk, there's no going around them. You're taking your life in your hands to go around them. So all we're asking is for the state and the city DOT to allocate resources, to allocate uh, intellectual resources as well, to uh, mm -hmm. get the brain power behind solving this problem. Uh, you know, Senator Gennaris' uh, bill several years ago allowed smaller trucks to stay on. It was a huge uh, uh, relief for our neighborhood. But we need more. We need to get these 18-wheelers out of the, the equation here. Now, as far as, as the city is concerned, what, what part can the city play on, in, well, in I mean, this? They, you know, there's a certain old part of ownership that, that we have of the roadway. Um, you know, the state DOT plays a huge role in this as well. Uh, there needs to be a meeting of the minds here to recognize there is a problem, to recognize this needs to be solved. And uh, we're looking forward to working with them. I think that there is a win for everyone here because uh, the truck drivers are, are, are having to navigate our roads in a way that they don't want to. And we, we don't want them navigating our roads right. <laughs> to begin with. Yes. Uh, and so it's easy for us uh, to come up with this solution, to solve this decades old problem and to bring a little sanity to what is uh, uh, what should be a street, but it feels much more like a highway. And finally, uh, are you hopeful it, it can be done soon? I, you know, I hope so we can get the ball rolling, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I don't, is it going to happen tomorrow? No. But, I mean, as we see behind us, they're doing the cashless tolls on the uh, Triborough Bridge. Uh, you know, that took time, but they're hopefully nearing the end of that construction. I certainly hope that they are. Uh, but they, uh, that took time, but once it gets done, it's there forever. Right. So the same thing, as if we can get the ball rolling here, it'll be a solution that maybe that happens tomorrow, but when it does happen, we can get it done latter part of this year, or whenever it is that we're able to get it done. Uh, it will be there, it will alleviate our, our uh, 
uh, traffic on our streets and, and will be a real fix. Thank you. Anything else you wish to add? No, Elena, I, I thank you for all that you do, and, and I'll be back soon because I know we're uh, in the, mon the, mo the month of our budget. Yes. So uh, I will be back to talk about all the great things in our budget very soon. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Elena, for being the great voice that you are. Senator Janaris, uh, years back you were able to pass a law for small trucks to, to continue on from Grand Central to Triborough Bridge. Now uh, you have a big new task, right? Yes, we, we got the law changed to allow the small trucks to stay off of our local roads and stay on the highway. We would have done it then for the big trucks too, but they don't fit. Yes. Uh, because of the overpasses and so now we're asking the state to step in and do the work to lower the road so that the bigger trucks can continue on the same road uh, and give peace of mind to the neighborhood. There's so many people that live near Astoria Boulevard that can't get a good night's sleep for many years because you hear the trucks right now and this is the middle of the day. This continues all day and night. During the rush hour it's even worse. It creates noise problem for people that live here, pollution problem for people that live near Astoria Boulevard. It creates massive traffic. Some days it's difficult just to cross over to get from north of the highway to south of the highway. Uh, and it is something that the truck drivers would actually want because they don't want to come on our roads either. They would love to stay on the highway and continue to where they're going. But so much of this traffic has nothing to do with Astoria. It is people coming from north from on the bridge and going somewhere else on the BQE, but they're not allowed to stay on the highway to get from one to the other, and we're trying to change that. And of course, we've seen many accidents, and also, even the overpass right here under the train is not high enough. You know how many times they get caught under this? Yes, it's, this is one of the worst intersections in the entire city of New York, and this is a big step we can take to help alleviate the problem. So much of this traffic comes from the big trucks that are required to come off the bridge, and get back on the highway. If we could do this fix, it would be a big step forward as we try and make this a safer intersection. And you mentioned earlier the the, the cost is not so it's not tremendous. No, we every day in this city we dig up the roads and we repave them when they're damaged. That's all this would take. Dig up the, this about a half of a mile of the Grand Central Parkway, lower the grade and repave it. It shouldn't take very long or cost very much at all. It's just a matter of getting the attention on the problem, and that's what we're trying to do today. You have a big task before you. As far as uh, the state assembly is concerned, uh, when are you going to uh, go forth putting the legislation to make this change? Well, this has to happen in steps. First, we have to make sure that the Department of Transportation and the governor uh, approves this investment. As I mentioned uh, earlier, this will be an investment in, not just in infrastructure, but in public safety and in the environment. So we have to make sure that the money is in place to, to lower the roadway. Um, that will not happen until next year's budget, because we've already passed the budget for 2017. 2018, so we have to wait until next year. Once it's passed, I will tell you that the, legisla that the legislation will need to make sure that the larger trucks stay on the roadway uh, will happen very, very quickly. Both Senator Gennaris and I understand the importance of this change, of this improvement. Um, as I mentioned, I grew up just down the block. I know firsthand how important it is to improve the safety and the traffic patterns in this area. Um, so again, as I mentioned, it has to happen in steps. First is to make sure that the governor decides to make this investment, and uh, then, then Senator Gennaris and I will take care of the legislative changes that we need to take care of. Is there any other legwork you need to do? I think we just have to make sure that we keep the pressure up. Mm -hmm. uh, the more voices we hear, the better. Um, clearly, uh, the more voices we hear, we can we can be very honest with uh, the higher-ups that there. Th this is a major, major problem. And as, uh, as was mentioned, it's not just for the residents of this community, it's also for the motorists who use these roadways. Uh, anything else you wish to share with us? I, I wish everybody uh, the wonderful start of a beautiful summer and uh, hopefully we'll have more beautiful days <laughs> like this. And uh, I really think that we should keep in mind how important it is to have safe streets. and. Uh, Crossing a street and being afraid for your life is not really the solution, and that's really what we're working on improving here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congressman Crowley, as I mentioned earlier, I, 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 I've been covering stories here in Astoria, uh, events organized by the uh, council member, and I always uh, see you around, which means that the, uh, you are a congressman in Washington, but also a congressman for here uh, in our community, and we thank you for that. So today, uh, what part can you play in, in making uh, this area safer and cleaner? Well, first of all, I want to thank the local elected officials in, 
and Councilman Castaneda's, as well as Senator Gennaris and uh, uh, Assemblywoman uh, Samodis. We have a great uh, working relationship and a great team here in the Astoria community, and I, I applaud them uh, for the. They they are incredibly hard workers, and when they put their mind to something, more often than not, it happens. And where I can lend support is is be here physically to let the community know that I'm. I'm supportive of their efforts, as well as I have great relations as well. My state days, I was in the State Assembly for over a dozen years and, uh, and maintained some great relationships within the New York State uh, State DOT, Department of Transportation, as well as the Governor's Office, uh, and to lend my support and, uh, for this, this project. Now, in Congress, you have many, many challenges uh, with the yep. new president. What can you share with us? Do you think uh, you guys can ever get together and stop fighting? Well, I think there's always going to be a certain level of, of, of uh, I don't say fighting, but I think uh, disagreement. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we do need to get back to solving problems for people. Uh, I, I, I would wish that the president uh, would, would settle down a bit. Um, I've, I've never worked with a president um, uh, who I felt has been attacking my constituency in the way in which this president is. Uh, having said that, I hope that at least for the next three years, we can get to a point where we can actually work together. He hasn't demonstrated that yet, but I hope he does. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, he lacks understanding or because he comes from the uh, business world, uh, he sees things differently, but in Washington, things don't run the same way? I know many people who, who are very successful in the business world um, who are good, honorable, and decent people and uh, understand that Washington may be different, uh, but understand how maneuver there as well. I think what the president, you know, actually lacks is uh, certain levels of empathy, uh, in my opinion, uh, and um, uh, that's something that maybe you can learn early in life. It's not about business. I know many men and women in business who, who, uh, who, who are empathetic uh, and sympathetic uh, in, in many respects. Um, I, look, there is a difference between you know business. Uh, you know, you can't declare bankruptcy in, in, in government. That doesn't work. You know, the tools that maybe you can use or exploit or overuse in business, they're, they're not available here. Uh, and so I think there is, a, there is a learning curve. You have to learn how to, uh, to govern. And I hope he does. I, I just think that maybe somewhere along the line, he missed those classes when it came to <laughs> sympathy and understanding and empathy for other people. And finally, you have the health care bill before you. What, what do you think is going to happen? Well, that's, uh, that's a big issue. Uh, uh, the, the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, came out with a score of this present bill uh, stating that 23 million Americans will lose their coverage if the Republican bill passes. And I, you know, I just simply can't, I can't support something like that. Uh, it's now um, uh, caused me to, uh, I think, uh, really strive more now towards a, a universal uh, coverage bill, a Medicare for All bill, because I think what the Republicans are attempting to do is so counter uh, to what we were trying to do to get as many Americans covered who here to Ford did not have access to insurance. But Obamacare had a lot of problems too. They promised your, your uh, rates are not going to go up, you don't, you don't have to change your doctor. So that bill had a lot of issues well, as well. Yeah, I don't think they ever said that rates wouldn't go up. I think what they said is that it would, it would start to arrest and slow down the growth. Uh, one of the fast, one of the almost ceaseless, endless growths in, in uh, uh, health care has continuously seen uh, uh, rates increases. But we know that, that it slowed over the, uh, for the first time in 20 years uh, after that, that the Affordable Care Act gave 20 more years to the life of the Medicare system as we know it. Uh, that um, what I've been saying is that we needed to mend the law, not end the law. Uh, and I think that's where we should have been focused on what can we do to make this even a better, an even better law as opposed to just ripping it out. What I can tell you is that 23 million Americans who have insurance today, they're going to lose that insurance if, this, if their law becomes law. So. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you so much. And Thank keep you. up the good work. Thank you very much.